Hey everyone, check it out. Tanya made it home with the same set of axles that it left with. It made an entire race weekend without destroying a set of axles. So pretty happy about that. But before we just assume that the problem is solved, I wanna take those axles apart today and examine them, see if they actually survive properly, see if that's the solution going forward, and a little bit of further discussion on that. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing to note under here is, do you see these uh, CV boots? They actually failed. Um, one, this one here is almost not failed, but the other three are fully failed. Um, you can see here, and, uh, but you can see in here, this is kind of how they failed. So I went ahead and just ran them all weekend anyways. This failed on Friday night. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit of grit in there, which is, I mean, that's some of the reason that we have to get in there and inspect anyways, so. Yeah, and then the other thing is, all of my, uh, do you see those paint marks there? All of them actually stayed, so I didn't have any problems with any of these getting loose. So, yeah, all right, let's take a look. All right, so at first glance, um, the oil, the grease, sorry, changed color, but it doesn't smell bad. No, it doesn't smell burnt and it overall looks fine. So let's go ahead and disassemble these and see what we got. All right, so this isn't anything we didn't know, of course, but we can see the shiny ring here. Um, obviously the shaft was hitting there not uh, not a ridiculous amount, honestly, but enough that we can't leave it like that, that's for sure. Which is a shame because I really like these high-speed boots. But I've got some ideas. We'll get to that in a second. Now everything's clean. Overall, I gotta say, this was a huge success. Super happy with this. Um, first couple things to note is all of the grease was discolored, but I did notice a, a bit of a pattern. So if you look on here, which this has the, the most torn up boot uh, to the point where like these ones here, right? They're still, they're still sitting around the shaft. Of course, stuff could get in there, but not nearly as much. And this one only had the tiniest of tears. And if you look here, this grease actually still has quite a bit of red in it, which is the initial color of the grease. Um, and this one here is the, the most discolored. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the reason the grease changed color is because of contamination. And if you feel it, it's still very much, this is still grease. These things have not gotten to the point where they're so hot that the grease has broken down. Now, a couple things that are really interesting I found. Um, Let's start with this one here. The first thing to note is you can see how there's there's a channel here, the whole width. This ends up being one of the really big advantages of these axles. So if you look, look here kind of at the inset here, you can see they shuffle back and forth and that makes it so that essentially, instead of just riding on one single little spot here, the, the whole thing can move back and forth, be spreading the heat load in there. And overall, it just, seems to work really well. Now that said, you can see here there's a there's an area here of high polish um, and there's even here it's beyond just polished you know there's an area there where you can definitely see a bit of a track going on. Now that is the one that has the most of that going on. If we take the one that had the least dirt ingress, um, if we look here you can see that's really not the case over here right there's there's an area with more polish here um, but overall really not a big deal and something that is important is on this one here this is the one that had uh, this boot here that was essentially intact and i think having the boots on there helped it so that the axle shaft didn't just easily slide back and forth the boot was keeping it more centered keeping the wear off of you know, just sitting there right against one of the edges or the other edges. And as a result, 
no, I, I think this is this is the, one of the big lessons learned here, right, is we need that boot to keep this thing centered. The other really interesting that I noticed is if you look at this one right here, so you can see in here there's essentially nothing of note on the inside there. Um, you can see a tiny little bit right there. There's a little bit of wear. This one here did not have much dirt ingress at all. If we look here, this is the one that had the most dirt ingress. You can see, see how that's all polished up in there? Sorry, it's a little tricky to get enough light in there, but uh, yeah, there you go. You can definitely see there's a ton of wear on there. Now, of course, that wear, if you look at the uh, the inner race here, you can see, you know, there's corresponding wear right there. Um, I don't think this is any cause for concern. It's definitely telling us that these clearances are running very tight, right? If this joint shows the wear because it had a little bit of dirt in there, and this one doesn't because it didn't have any dirt in there. Now, continuing the good news, none of these balls show any signs of wear, any signs of heat. Um, I don't have anything to uh, test the hardness in here, but if I were to test these, I'd bet they're still at the original hardness right there. It's not like the balls that we've seen in previous CVs when I destroyed them, even the ones that weren't destroyed, right? These balls were starting to get blue and black, uh, which is obvious that they, they've just gotten way too hot. Now, speaking of wear, there is one thing that is a significant cause for concern. Um, yep, right there. You see it right there? There's pitting right there. Now this pitting only appeared on the one that had uh, this one here with the really bad dirt ingress. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the pitting is not actually a problem, but something to keep in mind is these joints here, these, uh, uh, let's see, MP9470B are essentially the cheapest race prepped joints that I could buy. And I'm using air quotes on race prep there because really what it looks like is it's just these balls were undersized so that when the joint is together, it, it's just loose, uh, which is great, right? It, it definitely gave us what we need, but a proper race prep joint, right? Like you can see in here, there's, you know, the, the heat treating, there's a little bit of scaling left in there. This, a proper race prep joint would actually be polished and whatnot, and this this is not the case. But I think we've proven that it's definitely good enough. So for the next race, I went ahead and picked up some CV boots, and in order to keep them nice and small, so the CV boot on a 930 joint usually goes around the outside, and it's this massive boot. But again, the beauty about these 930 joints is they're used all over the place, and one of the places that they're used a lot is off-road racing. And what this boot is, it's actually an inner boot. So when you're off-road racing, you wanna keep the grit out of the CV. Well, I mean, you wanna keep the grit out of the CV anytime, but, and they've got this solution, which is a double boot setup. So you put this boot on the inside and then you put another boot yet on the outside. So if you tear one, you still have another boot. I'm not gonna run the double boot setup, but the inner boot is nice and small, which, allows for, I'm a little tight on clearance here to the frame. I think if I were to run a full-size 930 boot, it just wouldn't work. Now, what did this cost, right? Well, there's a breakdown. You can see it's a little under $1,400, and that's really not quite true because I had to get a pile of these manufactured in order to, uh, to bring the cost down, and the pricing that I just gave you is only accounts for four of these, not, uh, and as you can see, I've got more than four made, right, because this one's not welded. But if you go ahead and look at custom axles, normally, you know, $1,400, that's getting away, I won't call it cheap, but it's certainly cheaper than some of the options out there. And what I really like about these with the bolt-on joints on both sides, it means, it means this, I can actually service the darn things. An outer CV normally is just such a pain to disassemble. Uh, this, yeah, this is better. And what this will solve here, let me show you guys what this solves. You see this right here? This is my pile of CV shafts that over the years I've, I've had to kind of scavenge from different things. And I, I, think I'm, I think I'm more or less done with that. This, this is just a better solution going forward. Um, I think EV 
will uh, Project EV will also get a very similar setup. Now I'll probably use a little bit more expensive joints on there. I'm not sure how much these would put up to uh, drag racing, but that's the beauty of these things. It's available. So yeah, um, going forward, what I'm going to do, I'm going to order at least one more joint. Um, I got to kind of inspect all of these really, really carefully. Maybe I'll order two. And um, I think I'm going to spend some time polishing all of these joints to get them kind of a little bit more closer to race prepped. And then, uh, yeah, we'll put it back together. The uh, Redline CV2 grease, I think, was definitely the ticket, right? It's still, it's still grease. And uh, I think we're done with this problem. So super excited about that. So from here, what's going to be coming soon is we're going to go ahead and swap the motor in that again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the double Atkinson motor back in there. The, that's described up in here. Uh, it only makes a tiny little bit less power than what's in there right now, but it's a lot more in the lemon spirit. So I think it's, it's fair that I put that back in there um, that way. Well, I mean, the, the next race, I think we're actually legitimately going to try for a win. So I want to make sure if we do win that we have a proper lemons grade motor in there um, it, it seems a little bit cheaty if we were to use this the power difference is not huge but that's definitely not a lemons grade motor so i'm going to go ahead and put the lemons grade one back in um, future developments on the 2ar as far as big power is going to go is probably going to be in the um, uh, Project EV. So hopefully that will be running soon and there'll be more videos coming on that soon, of course. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So, focus.